Okay, so there are two basic designs when it comes to trikes. There's one with two wheels at the back and one wheel at the front and the other with one wheel at the back and two wheels at the front. The two wheels at the back, one wheel at the front is called the Delta and the one with one wheel at the back and two wheels at the front is called a Tadpole for obvious reasons. Now a Delta trike will win over a Tadpole trike when it comes to situations where you need more traction. So you know, icy roads, slippery leaves, muddy, rain, that sort of thing. And of course I live in England where we get a lot of rain. The reason is it's two wheels, but Whenever you have two wheels being driven, you have a problem. When you have two wheels being driven going around a corner, one wheel, which has a greater arc to travel, has to move faster in order to cover the distance. And so the wheels turn at a different rate. And if you're trying to use a solid axle, solid driven axle, to turn both those wheels at the same rate, of course, it's going to slip, which is pretty much what drift trikes are, actually. If you weld the differential shut, you'll effectively get a drift trike, because the end slips out and drifts out. Now in a trike of course you don't really want that when you're riding on a road in a normal trike so you usually need a differential. The problem with differentials is they're fairly chunky and they're fairly expensive so trikes solve this, delta trikes solve this by only having one driven wheel on the back. So on an axle like that, a solid axle, you drive one wheel and you leave the other wheel to spin free and you effectively get a differential, which is a shame really because it kind of ruins the reason to have a delta trike because delta trike is about traction and you're only driving one wheel. So it would be great if we could form a differential to work effectively on a delta form trike that was really easy to make. Now that idea of a free wheel is really, really interesting because if we put two free wheels on this, a free wheel here attached to the wheel, a free wheel here attached to the wheel. When it's going in a straight line, the free wheels will act to lock the drive as if it were a solid axle. But if I want to turn, then this one, if you like, would become a pivot point and static, and this one would still be driven, and it would be able to turn that way because of the free wheel. Equally, on that one, it can turn that way because of the free wheel. So it's a bit like a limited slip differential that you can make from free wheels. Now, of course, what to do that, what we need is some free wheels. So when we look at a gear cluster on a bike, it's actually two sleeves of metal with a pole and ratchet. The pole and ratchet allows you to go in one direction as you drive it with the chain, but the ratchets fall back, and so it free wheels the other direction. And those two sleeves, the outer sleeve has the gears attached to them, and the inner sleeve has the axle attached to them. If we have a look at an axle, and the section of the inner sleeve, then the axle has a stub there that is threaded and that inner sleeve screws onto the axle and that's what drives the inner sleeve. The outer sleeve is driven by the chain. Now, we want it so that there's a separation, so that the outer sleeve drives the wheel and the inner sleeve is driven by the axle. So in order to get a free wheel to work as a differential, then you need to do an arrangement where you can connect the outer sleeve to the wheel and the inner sleeve to the axle. Now that's not too difficult. Now I have a couple of these old cassettes. These bike gear clusters actually are essentially a free wheel and lots of rings of gears. And they're held on in a variety of ways actually. And this one's really easy. It's got a locking ring with some outside teeth there. So all I need to do is grip that put something in that tooth, like a, a, a punch or a screwdriver, whack it anti-clockwise and it will unscrew. And if I do that, then I get my locking ring, and then I get a whole bunch, which are the gear clusters, and of course what I get is a freewheel. Now if I fix that inside to the axle the right way around, and I drive the axle in that direction, it'll drive the wheel. Then of course I can still use the free wheel. So I've got a free wheel cluster there, and if I can get two of those, then I've got my free wheel differential. Now, in order to do that, what I need to do obviously is attach those two to there, and then the wheels get attached to the outside of the free wheels. The first one of these is just so easy, and it's so easy because of this thing. This is a free wheel removal tool, and I've drilled it out to 16 mil because that's the axle. So if I put that free wheel tool on there, then what it becomes is a splined drive for the actual free wheel. So it fit in there, and then we can drive it. So as the 
axle turns, it will drive it the other way. It's a free will. Look at this free wheel was already meant to take an axle. So with our space so cut, we can just slide it on and then our free wheel to tool slides on there. And then the wheel with the free wheel attached slides on. Then in with the bearings and the original cups can go back on. And that gives us our free wheel so that it can be driven and yet can free wheel as well. Now on this side, of course, what we need to do is have the free wheel turn in the same direction as that. So unfortunately, if we were to fit it that way, it would turn in the opposite direction. We actually need to fit it on that way. So I've got another free wheel tool. It will go on there. That will fit onto that, and we need something here to take the wheel, exactly what we did there. So I've taken another free wheel, but just chopped off the bit that bolts onto the wheel, and what I'll be doing is welding that to that. That's it all together and finished, and there are the two flywheel cassettes. Now what happens is, as you drive forward, nothing. As you go back, the free wheels engage. So, it is one of the disadvantages of this kind of differential. You can't reverse. But then it's a bicycle, so how often do you want to reverse? I mean, mostly you just pedal it back with your feet, don't you? It's certainly what you do on a normal bike. But, also, if I'm turning a corner, and you listen, you'll hear one of the free wheels engage. And you can hear the free wheels engage as I turn a corner because although it acts like a locked axle in going forward, this one is as if it was standing still if it's moving slower than this one. And so we get a differential effect, which is really cool. So if we have a close up look at this one, this is the gear cluster without its gears. And there's the outer sleeve, the inner sleeve is just in there. The splined drive is going to the inner sleeve. This outer sleeve has been welded to another bit there, which is screwed onto the wheel. So this entire outer sleeve now contacts the wheel. The inner sleeve actually just hits the spline. The spline goes all the way through, and there's a bolt on there to pull it all together. But what we've done is separate the outer sleeve and the inner sleeve. So there's still a pole and ratchet in there, but that outer sleeve is directly connected to the wheel. The inner sleeve is directly connected to the axle, and that's how it works. Now on this one, we had it in that direction, so we used one half, but on the other one, in the other direction, so we used the other half. So I took this other half of the um, free wheel and then welded the connection to the wheel. So again, all of the outer sleeve is connected to the wheel, and the inner sleeve is only connected to the axle, and so we get two free wheels in the same direction. Now just to recap, these are the bearing mounts that will go to the frame. There's my drive, there's my brake, here's my rigid axle fixed to this wheel. We used those free wheel removers to engage with the free wheel cassettes that we took off. Now both of the cassettes need to point in the same direction so the free wheel is in the same direction. So they point this way and this way. The um, Free wheel removing tool actually engages in the splines of the internal of the cassette. The external of the cassette is fixed to the wheel. And that's how they work. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. There is how to make yourself a differential that won't cost you a fortune and actually fits on a trike. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please remember to subscribe.